But today is going to be a short video here about how you clean one of these espresso machines. And possibly many of you have the same at home and you don't have the time or feel or need to go and buy some kind of cleaning detergent, specially made for coffee machines. So I will show you how a chemist would just use some standard chemicals that you have in your kitchen to clean up your Nespresso machine. Well, let's get into the cleaning process now. Well, when I mean the cleaning, naturally, I don't mean cleaning external parts. The external parts like this is just simple take off and put in the washing machine. I mean cleaning the tubes that are going inside the machine. And those tubes might have oxidation in them, they might have debris, they might have a lot of things that's coming from the water. So when you have this machine for a couple of years, hard water, soft water, you're gonna have different amounts of oxidation or parts from the water is going to end up on the tubes inside. So to start off, first thing we do is to fill the tank with pure water that is completely transparent from the tap. And this water is a reference water. We're gonna see how that comes out in the end here. It should be the same transparency, right? Let's take a look. I'm using one of these metallic stainless steel capsules and we're going to insert that one, this one, as empty inside here so that we can transfer the water from the tube on this side over to the tube on this side because you need to have a capsule inside to do that. And now we placed an empty capsule in there so that we can get the water across. Now I'll take a put turn on the machine. We take an absolutely clean glass and we place it down here. When it stops flashing, we start the machine. Well, you can already now see clearly what I meant with all the dirt and stuff that you have inside your coffee machine without knowing it. So to give you an exact comparison, you see how brown that water is compared to what you have in the back there. So this is obviously a good time to clean out the pipes in your coffee machine. So here you can see the difference. So by just running the water through the machine one time without having anything inside loaded in terms of a coffee capsule, then this is all dirt sitting on the inside of the pipes or the tubings. Well, this is the what you had in the back as a comparison. And here is the capsule that we use to transfer the water from this side to this side. I will open it for you. Well, it's hot, but here you see, there was nothing inside. So all that color is coming from the dirty pipes in your coffee machine. Well, why am I telling you all this? Because with time, your coffee will gradually start tasting bad because of this. And you might not notice it the first time or the first few weeks, or it's a gradual transition. But if you know how Lavazza tastes and you do a comparison on another machine, you will definitely taste the difference. Then, I'm just going to answer this question. What, what is it that makes this come off when you run the machine? Well, it's the shaking movements. Because as you notice, when I turn on the machine, this whole thing was vibrating. And the pump is actually doing those vibrations. So there's a pump inside here that is pushing like some membranes. And with those pushings, when it raises, it increases, the pressure, it shakes the machine. And that's why 
this comes off from the inside of the pipes. So you can expect that there's a lot more sitting on the pipes inside your machine when it looks like this. But we're gonna remove all of it. So here you can see the starting point. I put the glasses next to each other so that you can see how efficient our cleaning procedure will be. This is the reference water and this is the first run on just regular tap water. Now we need to dissolve more of this stuff to get it out. And the most common household acid is acetic acid. And you can see acetic acid is called etica in Swedish. It's 24%. Um, acetic acid, you see 24%. That means that it's diluted with water. So acetic acid can be up to 100%, but 24% is enough for the purpose of cleaning your coffee machine. Now in white vinegar in the US, you have about 6% acetic acid. So it might not be as efficient as this that I'm showing you today, but you can find the more concentrated acetic acid in any hardware store or in pharmaceutical stores. Now, this acid, is it dangerous? Well, it's not dangerous. It's a weak acid and it's used for preserving fish, for example. A weak acid means that you can pour it on your fingers and you can rinse off your fingers and it won't harm your skin. But if you are exposed to this acid a lot, then it will have an effect on you. It won't give burn marks, but it smells really strong and it numbers your ability to smell things and it's going to stick in your eyes. Now, a good thing with acetic acid is that it does not dissolve any of your seals. It does not dissolve rubber, or plastics or anything that could be inside the tubings but it does dissolve inorganic oxides in this type of oxidation products that you get inside your copper or brass tubings that you will find inside the coffee machine. So we're going to push it through the machine in the same way as we pushed the water through. I'm gonna start with filling up so that we have a 12%. And if that's not enough, then we will run the 24 concentrated version here and we will let it sit in the tubings and then we'll compare what we get out on this side. That's about 50% of the original concentration, half of the concentration of what I have in this bottle. So it's approximately 12% acetic acid here, which is twice as concentrated as you get in white vinegar. Yeah, and this concentration is no problem to put your fingers in this, but it smells really bad. So we're mounting this back here on the back of the machine, and then we're turning on the machine. And I don't expect to get anything off the first time now when we just run through acid some. mixture, but when we let it sit for a while, we're going to dissolve the inorganic material that is inside the tube that is making our coffee dirty. And as a start, we put this one over there. And now I'm just gonna use a little bit of what we have over there to fill the pipes. So the first part that we got out here is mostly what was in the pipes. But now we can assume that the pipes are filled with acetic acid and they're hot. So it's going to dissolve what's left in there. But now we just wait and let it sit. So this is how it came out after the first run with acetic acid and you see the color of the contaminated water is much more brownish than it was before when I used only water to run through the system. So this means that we are dissolving deposits and dirt that is sitting inside the tubes. So now we're going to place this one. One next to the other ones. 
here you see the reference water. The reference water ran without acid and then with acid. So what you see here is the second run with acid and this time I've been let it sit in the tubings for about half an hour. So half an hour ago I pushed the button here, I filled the entire tubings with another set of acetic acid. You can see maybe now that it's a little bit darker than the last time we did this. I think it's going to show if I put it up next to the other ones. Yes, it's the reference water. Reference water run one time without acid. Reference water run with acid, 12%. And here is 12%, but I let it sit inside the tubes or inside the coffee machine for half an hour. Now I'm just gonna run a regular water through the system and see if it still looks like that. So what you see here now is final verification that I've cleaned the machine. Right now, I'm running clean water. And as you see, what comes out on this side is now completely transparent clean water again. You may also notice that it didn't shake as much. It wasn't vibrating as much as it did when it was dirty inside the tube. So possibly we've cleaned out some of the deposits inside the pump as well. So it's running more smooth the entire machine. But before we reach this point, then I did a verification after I did the second time with a 12% concentration and it still came out these debris or deposits from it as chunks. So I took the concentrated acetic acid or the 24%, I let that sit for half an hour in the tubings the same way as I did in this case with the 12% and what came out was this. So then I knew that I had cleaned the tubings inside, so there wasn't much left there. And now I've just flushed it. And this is where we are now. So this is just one step after flushing this one. This is the pure water. So this is the same, should look like the reference water. And I'm bringing over the reference water. It does. Well, this is hot, but that's cold. So we successfully cleaned the machine inside and there is nothing left now sitting in the pipes. And that was all that was required to clean the machine. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this helps you. And of course, oh, every machine is different. This machine had been standing for three years without cleaning. So there was a lot of deposits to remove. A regular cleaning interval once or every two weeks is probably a better way to go. Cheers!